Good Monday morning, I am MPJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function. A recurring comment on this channel is that I... Mm. Waste a lot of paper. People in the comments are constantly suggesting that I should use digital overlays or that I should uh, use a whiteboard. This frustrates a lot of you, uh, and uh, I hate waste too, but this, this is not waste. Today, I am going to try to convince you, at least you know, try to expand your view on what, what waste is. Believe it or not, this ties into programming as well, so we're going to look at some code later on in this in this episode. And expanding your view on what waste is, it's going to make you a better programmer! So at first glance, me using paper, uh, it looks like waste. These papers are not reusable. Well, I do you reuse the, the back of them, but... And these papers, they come from trees. So this is waste. This is bad, right? Right? Look how much paper I'm wasting. I'm just... I'm just tearing it up. This is this is horrible, isn't it? Look on this one. I'm I'm not look, I'm not even reusing the back of this one. Horrible. Now I would like to state for the record here that I that I I hate waste. For instance, I really hate throwing food away. Uh, and whenever I eat at McDonald's, it makes me feel bad because they have so much packaging on their food. But these specific papers, I do not consider these to be a waste. They are a, a different category. So there is this amazing book called Thinking Fast and Slow by a Nobel Prize winner called, his name is Daniel Kahneman. I've linked to it in the episode description. The book is basically about how your brain has uh, two systems. One system is really fast and it's uh, good at doing uh, really quick uh, quick thinking, uh, intuitive thinking, rough approximations really quickly, stuff like that. And then we have another system, one that is uh, a lot slower, but it's also more deliberate and more logical and can make much more advanced thoughts. Now, the fast system is really good when you're driving in your car and suddenly there's a deer on the road and you have to swerve around it uh, and wow, you said you had to do that really fast and now there is some asshole on the internet tearing up paper and your uh, system, your fast system is going to go oh that's waste, 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 waste and that is going to trigger uh, the emotion anger in you and research has, has shown that anger is uh, very, very, that the emotion that is most likely to get us to interact on social media so you're going to write an angry comment and you're gonna but instead, if you let your slow brain system do um, do the work, you can watch like this person is is tearing up a lot of paper here. Hmm. And you can you can watch behind the screen, your monitor or your phone or whatever, and you see that there's not actually a person here. You are watching a two-dimensional uh, artifact of a video production. The experience that you are having right now, it's going to be replicated to uh, at least 10,000 people the first week that uh, I release it. So in order for you to judge if there is actual waste being done, you have to imagine like the paper resource being expelled, the paper being used, and divide that by the number of views that this video has. And you actually also have to do an extrapolation of, of the growth of the video so that you kind of do an approximation of the lifetime of the video during the time it will stay on the internet, which is probably a few years. During the production of these videos, there's also a lot of uh, resources being used that you don't see. Mostly my time. Producing one of these videos takes uh, takes approximately a day. Uh, I uh, the script writing and editing and, and shooting, of course, and then a lot of setup and lighting and some makeup as well. And there's usually a bit of technical hassle as well that I have to solve every time. Plus uploading and rendering and probably something I forget. Basically, this channel eats up my Sunday. Uh, I there's nothing else I can do on Sundays. So basically, I 
allocate uh, a seventh of my allotted life to this to producing these videos. And is that a waste of time? I mean, I'm spending my day explaining a single programming topic. I could be spending time with uh, my family, I could be reading a book, I could be cooking some nice meal that I love to do, I could be going to the gym, which I don't love to do, I never do, really. I could do some consulting. I was recently, I recently turned down a, a, a consulting gig for 200 bucks an hour. Uh, that's real money that I could be doing instead of doing this channel. Or on the other hand, I could go like help out in a homeless shelter. Ooh, I, or I could go play uh, Quantum Break on my Xbox. It's right over there. I, oh, I would really love to play that right now. Instead, I'm sitting at a computer, uh, editing video and, and shooting video and, and writing scripts all day. Just to explain a single programming concept. Isn't that a waste? No! Of course not! This is the single most important thing I do all week. This is the best and most efficient use of my time possible. Why? Because every episode is seen by tens of thousands of people. Nothing else that I could do will create this much good per minute of life that I invest in it. If I spend an entire day explaining uh, monads to another person, oh, there's a link to that episode, the monad episode in the description, by the way. If I spent an entire day explaining monads to a person that might not even get it, that would be a very bad use of my time. But the monad video is not to one person, it's, it's beneficial to tens of thousands of people. And in just the same way, this is not a waste of paper. Before this episode, I went to, over to McDonald's and I bought two cheeseburgers. Uh, one of them I ate on the spot because I lack self-discipline and, and that was a waste. The paper wrapping that hamburger was a total waste because it, it just benefits one person. That is wasteful. This one, however, is a prop. And this paper waste is divided by all the people watching this video that I'm trying to make a point to. All the value that I put into these videos is multiplied tens of thousands of times. That is why... And that is why it's not a waste for me to spend half an hour trying to get a sentence, an important sentence of the script just right. Because even if it adds just a little value, it's still a big value because of this multiplication. In the same way, I used to have uh, these digital text overlays and I moved to paper because I like that I can throw them and I can, I can stick things on them. And I can, you know, they're so much more fun. They also give the channel a cool, distinct look that does, it looks fun, fun, functiony. A whiteboard, I guess, would do some of that. Uh, but a whiteboard is, I don't know if you thought about this, but a whiteboard has a glossy surface and I have these two big ass lights in my face all the time, so I would have to deal with the glare somehow. It feels to me like a whiteboard would be a step back from paper. These burgers are like my guilty pleasure number one, you are so good. Not sponsored, you should not eat these, these are horrible for you. Okay. Anyway, the concept that I'm trying to get across here is that just because something looks like waste doesn't mean it that it is. Because... Oh shit, I tore that up. Because waste is... Waste is context sensitive. You cannot determine if something is waste by looking at it in isolation. You cannot accurately conclude that something is waste just because your fast brain system will identify it as waste. You have to consider the whole picture using your slow brain system. I'm pointing at the right side and left side of the brain, but that's not what it's about. I don't even know if they have a location. Let me show you the implications that this has in programming. I'm going to show you two functions. 
They both locate an element in an array by checking its ID property. And I want you to think about if we need to optimize one of them. So in this example, this first one, uh, we have an, an, a function, find by ID, uh, and it has a, a for loop, it loops through an array that it gets here, uh, and it will compare the, the ID property on the array uh, with the ID that it gets from, from as a second argument. And if it matches, it will return uh, that item, that element. This is example two. Uh, it has the same signature, it's fine by ID, it takes an array and it takes an ID. And uh, it's a bit different though. It has a, well, let's call it, make this a let. Uh, it sets up a uh, found uh, variable and then it uses a for each to loop through the, uh, uh, the array. And for each item, it's going to do the same thing that we did up here, it's going to uh, compare the ID property on the, uh, the, the element or the item uh, with the ID that we're passing and we're passing in as an argument. And if it does, if it does match, it will assign the item to the found variable. And once it's done, it's going to return uh, found here at the end. So again, I'm asking you, do we need to optimize any of these functions? I am tempted to answer both. It's a bit of a cop-out answer, um, because then we cover all bases, but optimizing all code in our code base, it's, it's simply not uh, a realistic way of doing development. Development time is very expensive, and it is very expensive because developers take a long time to train, and uh, then they are useful for a little while, and then they retire, and then they die. If we spend our developer time on optimizing every single line of code that we ever write and ever run across, we would pretty much be doing only that and not getting any work done. We really need to have a thought process that allows us to pick and choose the battles when it comes to optimization. So with that in mind, I again ask you, do we need to optimize any of these functions? If you answered example one, you would be wrong. If you answered example two, you'd also be wrong. If, however, you answered, I don't know, you get a golden star. Because we cannot know. We need more information before we can answer that question. Cause... Waste is context sensitive. We need to know the context in which this function is being executed. So. Let me make up some context that conveniently makes my point. Let's say that you look at it and you find out that the function in example 2 was uh, used in a uh, batch processing script that runs uh, one or two times an hour. You also find out that the array that it's looking at, it's, uh, it's sometimes 500 items, sometimes 1000 items, but it doesn't grow beyond that and it won't really grow as the application load grows. It won't grow much over time. And what if I told you that the, the code in example 1 was used in uh, an animation library that uh, did this operation multiple times per second on an array that could easily grow to 100,000 items? When we look at these two examples in, in isolation, without knowing anything, about how they're used, I am tempted to think that uh, the one in example two is uh, the, the performance villain of the two. It uses for each, which is not as fast as a simple for loop. And also unlike example one, it, it doesn't stop when it finds the item. Uh, it just loops through the entire array regardless of, of whether or not it, it, it has found it. However, if we find out that this code is just looping through a few thousand items uh, and is only doing it a couple of times per hour when the user isn't waiting for it, optimizing this does not matter. Optimizing it would just be some kind of academic procrastination. It wouldn't really add any value. 
it would be me just moving code around. If a friend of mine, an end user, asked me what I, I did uh, at that moment, uh, I would just be uh, saying like, oh, I'm, I'm making this faster. Oh, so the software will be faster. Uh, not for you, but this specific part will be faster because it will emotion, and that will emotionally make me feel better as a developer. I, I wouldn't really add any benefit to anyone except me. If we view example one and in comparison to example two here, just in isolation without knowing the context that they are called, looks a lot better in comparison. But when you introduce the context and you get that, oh, I need to search 100,000 items per second, you realize that this algorithm, it, this is not gonna cut it. It's too slow. We need to optimize this. Maybe we would create a lookup table for the items in the array as we add them or something. I don't know really. That's not important for this discussion. The important part is that it is the context in which a function is, is being executed that determines if it's being wasteful or not. We need to know what context this function is going to get called from in order to know if it's worth the effort to optimize it or not. In summary, waste is context sensitive. Just because something looks like waste does not mean that it is. When you see a piece of code that your fast brain quickly identifies as, ooh, that's inefficient, always ask yourself a second time, in what context is this code being called? Is this really hot code? Is this really worth optimizing? If you like this video, please share it with a colleague. If you are that colleague, you have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release this every Monday morning, 0800 GMT time. Don't miss out, subscribe. I am MPJ, that's the Twitter bird. Uh, until next Monday morning, stay curious.